we are going to see how to access Azure Data Lake from Azure Synapse Analytics. Here we are going to access the Data Lake CSV files and we are going to do some transformation upon that and we are going to write those files to a destination. Here Data Lake 111212 is my storage account name and I have two containers here. One is source and the destination. My source container have two directories and directory one have a CSV folder and that is having four CSV files. Now I'm going to access this sources container and I'm going to perform some transformation upon that and we are going to write those files to the destination. In the destination we are having two directories so we are going to write the files to dir1. So let's go to Synapse Analytics and start writing code for that. Now here let's try to define what is our source and the destination. So we are trying to write source account name, destination account name, source container, destination container, along with the location of our source file. So my source account name is data lake 111212, which is quite a random name. And this is the same name which I am intending to write for the destination. And my source container is sources. And my destination container is destination. Now, we need to identify from which location we need to copy the CSV files. So as we've seen before in the sources container, we have the DIR1 and the CSV folder. Here we have the CSV files. Now we need to just access all these files. For that, let's copy this path and paste it over here. So this is my location of source. Now, we are actually trying to get authentication from the linked service. So let's create a link service and let's define the name here. First, let's go to manage, click on link service and create a new one. And to create the link service, we are making use of the system assigned managed identity as an authentication type. So just type data lake. Now here the authentication type is system assigned managed identity. Before that, you need to ensure that this Synapse Analytics have a system blob storage data contributed access for that storage account. So to perform that, go to the storage account, click on access control and IAM, and click on add, add role assignment. You need to type storage blob data contributor. So you need to have this specific role both to you and for the service in which you are trying to access. Here we are trying to access this storage account from the Synapse Analytics. So we need to have this specific role for the user who is trying to run this and for the service which is trying to access this. So let's click on next. I already have this role assigned for the Synapse and for both the user who is running this. So you need, just need to click on select members, select the member and also make sure you are typing the Synapse name this is exactly the name of the Synapse workspace. You need to select both and next, next and click on review and assign. So once you click on the review and assign, your role will be added. Here I might get error because I already have the role. Now let's go to the Synapse and once you select the system assigned managed identity, you can type your subscription type and choose the storage account which you have the role and click on test connection and our link service is created. So let's try to publish the link service. Our link service is published now. Let's try to copy the name of the link service and paste it in the part in which we have. So this is my link service name and we also need to insert the destination file location. So my destination is Container name is the destination and I have a DIR1 directory. So I'll just type DIR1 slash 
and now we have our destination file defined so let's also go to link service and just ensure everything is fine so if you have a slash at the end just remove the slash and just publish it again and now let's go to the notebook and let's try to write a code where we can access through the link service so we already have the code copied from the Microsoft official documentation. This is my code where I'm trying to get access to that particular storage account using the link service. So the authentication type is OAUTH and we are making use of the token library. I'll also mention the link in the description for the documentation. So we just need to replace the link service name with the one which we have just created. So let's see the official documentation first. So this is the documentation page where we are currently been following. So we have selected the authentication method as the manage identity and we are trying to access the storage account using the links service space token provider. So this is exactly the code in which we are trying to use now. Here we can see they are just reading the CSV file. So I already have the code copied so instead of just reading directly the CSV file, we, we just try to list what are the available things over there. So as we already have the variables, which is actually holding our account name and the container. So this is exactly the container name which gives this and the account name will give this. So let's try to display the DF here. And we need to run all and currently we can see the Spark session is still starting up. So let's try to pause and resume once it is back. And we can see the Spark is getting executed now. We already have the first one is executed and okay. So this actually isn't a data frame to use the display function. So let's try to print this. And this will just show what exactly is the protocol in which we have in the container. So this is exactly the one which we are using. Now let's try to display what exactly the directory is inside of it. For that, we need to make use of MS Spark Utils. So let's try to import that. From Notebook Utils, import MS Spark Utils. Now let's try to display that. So MS Spark Utils dot file system dot list. We are trying to display the contents inside this DF. Let's execute this again. Now we'll see a list of the directories which are actually present inside that. So we actually have a DIR1 and DIR2. Now this is in the sources. Let's try to access some CSV files which are actually present in the sources and the DIR1. For that let's make use of the same code. Here we already have the source location which is already been defined. So let's just uh, make it as file DF which is having the source and at the end we can just directly write the source file location so the file.df will currently hold exactly the path where we can access our csv files so let's just try to print the file df and here we can see this is the exact path now let's try to read the csv file so let's try to create a data frame so let's not uh, make this as a data frame to avoid any of the confusion. So this is actually the source data frame. So to read the file, we need to type read. So I need the format as CSV. And my file is also having headers. So let's try to make the option header as true. And I also want my file to have the same schema inferred. So let's use the infer schema and make it as true. Now let's try to load from this particular path. So we already have the path which is in the file. So load file. Now this will actually create a data frame which is having all the CSV files. So let's also try to display the source DF. Now let's try to run the cell. This will actually have all the data of all the CSV files which is under the CSV folder. And here we can see we are able to access the CSV files. Now let's make a simple transformation on this data. So let's just display the sum of the salary 
department wise. And once the transformation is done, we are going to write the transformed data to the destination container. So all we need to do is simply to create a view and we are going to write a SQL query on top of that. So let's take the source TF, which is currently holding our CSV file. So let's try to create a temporary view upon that and uh, let's write a SQL query just to group the data based on the department wise. So let's name the view as uh, transform new and let's try to write a SQL query. So and we are going to copy the SQL query to a data frame which is the trans TF. So we can make use of spark.sql to write the SQL query. And I, I already have a SQL query which is written to save time. So we just need to change the view name over here. And let's try to display the data frame. And now we have the transformed data. We need to write this transformed data to a destination container. For that, uh, let's may make use of the write function. Transform df is our data frame which is having the transformed data. So let's try to write and we can make the mode as overwrite. So in case we have already existing file, it will overwrite. And we want the format as CSV. And we need the headers. And we need to save that to the destination path. So we already have the destination path which is already been defined. So which is the destination file here. So instead of copying this, we'll return an error. Before that, we need to get the entire path of our destination. For that, let's try to write the destination path here. So the destination path is, we can just make use of the same source path and just replace that with the destination names. So our source container must be destination container. Source account name must be destination account name. And the source file location must be destination file. And let's try to enter the destination path in the save. And here we have it is executed. So let's try to go to the destination and let's see the path here. So we copy to DIR1. And we can see in the DIR1, we have the CSV being copied. So if you open that, it should have the aggregated data. And now we are able to access the storage account and we are able to perform some transformation in the Synapse notebook. And we are able to copy that to a destination folder.